So I've been using the Pixel 8 Pro for the past few days and this is almost exactly what I've been wanting out of a flagship Pixel phone. But before my full long term review, here are my thoughts on my experience with it so far. When I took the phone out of the box, it was the back glass that grabbed my attention first. Google reverted to the matted frosty glass and I thank them heavily for that. To me, this is miles better than the glossy finish, albeit a lot more slippery. It's not the exact same feel as the Pixel 4 XLs, but it's close and if anything, it might be a bit smoother. The next thing I noticed was the flat display. For two years, Google went with curved edges and it did make for some very attractive phones. But to me, flat displays are more practical, they're easier to manage, especially in a large frame like this, and overall, I'm happy it's back. Interestingly enough, one of the first things that popped into my head when it came to the 8 Pro's construction was the Galaxy S21 Ultra. That phone was, and still is, built like a tank. Not that the 7 Pro felt cheap, it doesn't, but with the 8 Pro being a bit narrower, its corners being more rounded, the frame being thicker, thicker since the display is flat, and the different finish on the glass, it just feels more solid. It's the most premium feeling Pixel yet, alongside the Pixel Fold of course. Now before anything else, I wanted to test the speakers. The 7 Pros weren't too great unfortunately, so I kept my fingers crossed for an improvement. The 8 Pro speakers blow the 7 Pros out of the water. They sound fuller, there's way more low end, and I'm by no means an audio professional, but to my ears, I think it's safe to say that these are right up there with the likes of iPhone and Galaxy speakers. The haptics got better too, they were already very good on the 7 Pro, but they're a bit stronger, a little more crisp, and tighter this time around, which I like a lot. Probably the best haptics on an Android device, if not any phone at the moment. The optical fingerprint scanner has worked well, I don't have any major complaints, although I would like to see the upgrade to ultrasonic tech and along with getting flattened out, the display has near symmetrical bezels and it got brighter. Like a lot brighter. We're looking at an increase to 2400 nits peak brightness up from 1500 nits from the 7 Pro, making this 400 nits brighter than the entire iPhone 15 lineup. It's insane. So I've had no issue viewing the screen out in the sun. It also has a slightly lower resolution than the 7 Pro, which is interesting, but honestly, I wouldn't have noticed had I not seen the spec sheet. This is a really good looking display. Alright, performance. Well, so far I don't have any complaints. The phone runs as it should and does what I need it to do. It's very smooth and snappy. I haven't experienced any overheating. The phone does get warm under heavy load, there's no doubt about that. But so does pretty much every other phone out there. And in general, it has been running a bit cooler than my 7 Pro did. And yes, I know a lot of people have had a lot to say about the Tensor chip, bashing it into the stratosphere. Let's be real, this chip isn't going to impress with its raw performance. In fact, with benchmarks, it does the opposite. And yes, while it's not necessarily supposed to crush the competition in every perceivable performance, <laughs> while it's not necessarily supposed to crush the competition in every perceivable performance metric, this is still a $1,000 phone. I get it. People don't buy pixels to run games on ultra high settings at high frame rates, but as a pixel fan, I want to see this phone succeed in every area possible. Here's my thing, I've used every Pixel phone since the beginning and throughout all of the bugs and strange design choices, quality control issues and more, I'm still a big fan. Why? Because of what it's actually like to use this phone within my daily workflow. Pixel 8 Pro now has class 3 biometrics, meaning you can use face unlock for things like banking apps, password managers, and other apps that require higher levels of security. That's thanks to that Tensor G3 chip and machine learning. The only other Android phone that's been able to do this is the Pixel 4. Pretty crazy, right? And of course, we know all about the other great quality of life features Pixels are known for, things I begin to miss when I'm using other devices. Battery life has been quite good so far. We'll see what happens with adaptive battery and future updates, but so far, so good. I've been ending days with about 15-20% to 20 left in the tank on average, and when I really push it with very heavy use, I'm looking at closer to 5-10% to 10 left before I head to bed. And I've been able to achieve 7-8 to eight hours of screen on time pretty comfortably. And yes, this is with full resolution enabled in the settings. And we'll have to wait and see, but I wouldn't be surprised if I'm able to get a day and a half with very light casual use. But I'll continue testing and see where things go as time moves on. I'm still going to need Google to step it up with charging speeds though. This year we get 30 watt charging, up from 23 watts from last year, and that's fine I guess, but that's still well behind the competition. A phone at this price point should absolutely have faster charging, in my opinion. Yes, this is a large battery, but it still takes over an hour and a 
a half to charge from zero to 100%. I'm not asking for 100 watts or anything, but I'm just saying some like 65 watts would be kind of nice. So just like pretty much everyone else on the face of this planet, I stare at my phone screen more often than I care to admit. If you work from home, if you're a gamer, a student, a TV show binge watcher, a social media addict, you've probably experienced dry eye, red eye, eye strain, blurred vision, and even declining vision. Yep, sounds like me. VisionUp is here to help with the largest library of eye exercises geared towards improving the strength and flexibility of the muscles that control eye movement in an effort to get rid of eye strain, fatigue, and itchiness, improve eye coordination and focusing, reduce blurriness and headaches, and much more. 10 minutes a day is all it takes. VisionUp is backed by science, as it was developed by actual ophthalmologists, and it's all nicely wrapped up in one simple app. It's got well over 2 million downloads, and 70% of VisionUp users confirmed improvement of eyesight. The app makes things super easy and even fun to work with, and it was built for anyone and everyone to use. It's free to start, and if you'd like, you can subscribe and unlock access to a whole slew of features. Be sure to check out the VisionUp app in the description. And a huge thanks to VisionUp for supporting the channel and sponsoring this portion of today's video. Okay, let's talk cameras. Now, I haven't had the chance to get out there and test the cameras fully just yet as I've been under the weather recently, but so far, I mean, what is there to say? They're cameras on a Pixel phone. This revamped setup is great. As expected, photos across different conditions come out looking very nice. They're colorful, sharp, and detailed with excellent dynamic range. But kind of like how regular everyday shots from the iPhone 14 Pro to the 15 Pro saw incremental updates, the Pixel 8 Pro's cameras aren't miles ahead of the 7 Pro's for regular everyday shots. They're pretty similar. However, color consistency between the three lenses did get better, and boy did video capture get upgraded. It looks much better now, with more detail and improved colors, and I think it's safe to say it's moved way closer to the top dogs. I'm genuinely impressed, and I'm really looking forward to testing this more, especially when those video boost and night sight video features come out. Oh, and quick side note, I'm glad to see we finally have pro controls in the camera app. Big thumbs up for that. Now, of course, the cameras are not perfect. Swapping between lenses is still a little choppy. Selfies look good, but sometimes the image processing can get a little aggressive by over sharpening the shot. And I wish the controls for white balance, shadows, and brightness were still readily available like they were before. But overall, this is still my favorite phone for quick draw photos. Just pull the phone out, point, and snap. It's so good. The new Magic Editor has been fun to mess around with. Uh, you can have it generate new scenery and different looks. You can move objects around. Best Shot is kind of creepy, but also very impressive with how it allows you to select different faces within a set of group photos to get the best overall result possible. Being half Filipino and having been through countless family photo sessions, if you know, you know, this feature will be very useful and from what I've seen, it works well. Audio eraser seems to work okay, I'd like to get out into the city to really test this, but it seems to do a solid job with things like wind noise. Seven years of OS updates is insane. In a good way, of course. It'll be interesting to see what that'll be like. I definitely plan on making a seven years later video on this phone, and it'll also be interesting to see if and when the FDA approves the ability to measure the temperature of humans with this sensor on the back. It's a very odd addition this year, right? But I'm sure it'll prove to be a useful feature if it's reliable. For now though, the sensor is just kind of fun to play around with every once in a while. Whether or not the Pixel 8 Pro is worth the extra $100 this year is entirely up to the buyer. One tough pill to swallow is the price jump plus the base model remaining at 128 gigabytes of storage. Either way, this is a great phone and to me, all in all, it remains clear that this phone, despite all of the negativity coming from the angry tech nerds on social media, belongs in the conversation with all of the other top tier phones out there. If you made it to this point of the video, you are awesome and I appreciate you. Drop a potato in the comments if you're part of the potato gang and let me know what you think of the Pixel 8 Pro. It's been Zach and thank you so much for watching.